Goed, goeiemiddag en GT in 2 1 studente, dit is week 9, ons behandelstudie eenheid 5 en kan julle glo, dit is ook die laatste studie eenheid wat ons in die module gaan doen die oog, uh, of die, 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 um, die uh, ding wat ek vir die week 11 plan is om hersienings te doen um, met julle Goed net weer eens die contactpersonerlede, soos wat hulle nou al ken en dan gewoond is, op die asserings um, rooster, hulle het julle tweede gedeelte van julle semelise opdracht, en um, hy moet 10 2 oktober inwees, soos wat ek hier ook um, aangeduid. Ok, we going to do one thing only today, although it is quite a lengthy thing, uh, basically being together what we've learned uh, through language, uh, in interpretation and um, uh, writing skills, baie van hierdie goed, sal jy daar kan ook al in akkaag gesien het, ek gaan dit ook nie vir jou uh, met jou behandel soos in akkaag nie, en ek gaan dit ook nie met jou assesseer soos in akkaag nie, maar jy kan toch iets daarvan in die examen um, verwacht, en jy sien ook iets daarvan in byvoorbeeld jou, um, die tweede gedeelte van jou semester opdracht. Ok, let's start by looking at writing structure. Now, you would have probably heard this before, that you cannot write properly without a, a proper writing structure. Now, um, ek het ander eerstejaarsmodules aangebied, my vrou bied eerstejaarsmodules aan, en dit het blij nog die grootste probleem onder studenten, is om structuur te skep. En ek dink dit kom met beplanning, en ek dink dit, dit, dit uh, kom wel by dat uh, mense nie behoorlijk hulle werk uh, oorlees nie. Remember, good, re good writing is rewriting. And it doesn't necessarily doing the whole thing over, mean doing the whole thing over, it just means moving things around, aligning things for it to make sense. And we're going to have a look at how this aligning is structured and how you, whether it's in Afrikaans or English, can make, can get achieve the best result possible just in terms of your writing technique uh, for longer assignments and essays that you have to end in uh, during your stay at Aros. Okay. Um, we know, for example, that um, effective writing in complete sentences um, is not enough when you write in the academic context. It should be carefully structured. I've said that a little bit in my own introduction um, because it helps you to follow uh, what the uh, writer is saying. Okay. Um, I've mentioned the stuff uh, there at the bottom about taking effective notes while you're studying or doing a research or doing research. That's, of course, um, depends on what type of style you use. Uh, my wife and I are both busy with postgraduate studies now. My wife um, are in aid met 10 October in lees. En dit geld maar daarvoor ook. Want we nog steeds baie leeswerk doen op hierdie stadium. Ons moet uh, uh, een belangrike uh, uh, inrichting gaan uithaal sonder moet wenig die hele uh, uh, paragraaf, ach die hele artikel te lees. Want ons het net so veel tyd. En die belangrike ding wat mens ook moet onthou met hierdie inrichting en hierdie techniek wat ons met, uh, met jou leer is, Het gaan nie net oor jy wat skryf, nie, het gaan oor jy wat lees op, en om inrichting van een ger uh, te verwerk. Uh, so, um, don't just say, oh, this is another writing exercise. Treat it as a reading exercise, as a thinking exercise as well. But when you have to do research uh, and find little tidbits of information, instead of using the entire thing and risking um, plagiarism, for example. The next thing, um, we need to be able to distinguish between um, uh, important ideas, okay, uh, that you need to obviously, uh, well, important ideas and less important ideas. Um, you can find them by looking for clearly defined topics, main ideas and topic sentences. And then um, also looking at paragraphs and where you find them in these uh, paragraphs. And that is basically what we're going to, um, wat ons vandag gaan uitplaas, oor hoe hierdie ding aan mekaar gesit word. En ek gaan ook vir julle um, stap vir stap wijsig gee om, om, om dit te kan doen. Ok. Um, if we look at longer pieces of writing, longer of course uh, being academic writing, um, more than 300 words I would say, uh, you should be able to, in a well written piece, you should be able to find several main ideas and um, the goal to aim for is that each paragraph in the text will have one main uh, idea. Okay, um, I'm going to use the, cho the, the topic children's literature. Um, and then uh, children's literature, I can discuss you know, the main ideas of the history of children's literature, modern children's lit literature, and themes in children's literature. So each of these uh, swap main ideas are paragraphs uh, on their own. 
um, with my main idea or my main heading being children's literature. Important to note here, I think I'll mention it later, this initial heading here is not a sentence. It's just a topic. It's a phrase. There's no subject and no verb. Um, so this is just a phrase. And that is how main ideas or, or main main ideas develop. Chief main ideas, if you want to put it like that, uh, are from phrases. As jy van jou school daar, daar komt hou, wat jylle die, where you made a spider diagram, when you planned your things, there was also this phrasal main idea in the body of the spider, and then your sub-ideas came uh, uh, from the legs, and then you, you carry on doing that. Dit is nog steeds relevant om jou goed ter soot te beplan. Um, dit is rarig, om mense, as, ek bedoel, ek het nou, um, ek het so bykie my vrou gehelp, en daar van, al goed structureren, sikke goed is, En in sekere goed is het ons net liek raak, en denk weer saam stel, ons het baie gesikkel, want ons het nie behoorlijk beplan nie. So ons moest teruggaan en beplan, en gesê, dit is wat vir ons soek, en toe het ons die leeswerk gedoen, en toe het goeders begin uitkom, en, en invul, en, en vir hulle selfsorg, en die dinge baie makkeker gegaan. Ok, um, your topic sentence, of course, is your main starting point uh, in each paragraph. Um, it is also the lead for any uh, main ideas. Um, as I said, uh, it's always, or the, the main idea itself is always expressed as a phrase, no subject and sometimes no verb. And the main idea of each paragraph is finally converted into a topic sentence. Okay. And leiden it, maar ook een informatieve sin. Dit is baie belangrijk om het so te verstaan. You can't just, well, you need to make a statement in that, but it should be a statement in the sense that it leads the, the reader further to explore the rest of uh, the paragraph. This statement, of course, unlike the main idea itself, is a complete sentence uh, uh, telling the reader what your paragraph is about. Okay, the next thing we look at, um, obviously the topic sentence is mostly found in each paragraph, but it may also be placed um, anywhere else in the paragraph. I must say that anywhere else to me is perhaps, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see the purpose behind that always, uh, unless you babbling on, uh, or let me put it like this, it can be very easy to babble instead of just to get to the point when you start doing things like placing a topic sentence somewhere uh, uh, in the middle of the paragraph. Okay. Uh, the other important thing, the previous paragraph's main ideas um, should be expressed in the following uh, uh, topic sentence. That's, of course, at, um, children's literature. Sorry. I said I'm going to use the topic of children's literature. So, we spoke about the history of children's literature, modern children's literature, and key themes. Now I've converted these into topic sentences. There's my first one in the history of children's um, um, literature. The history of children's literature is rich and dates back to the Greek and Roman eras. Now you'll start giving examples, but we're going to look at how that works uh, from here on. The, the, the next paragraph's topic sentence, modern children's literature has, has come a long way from fairy tales and increasingly focuses on the problems of children and teenagers. Typically from your one to your next paragraph, there should be a conclusion, a conclusion, a conclusionary sentence that links with your next uh, paragraph. Then, themes in children's literature, key themes in children's literature include conquering fears, dealing with isolation, the importance of family, and coping um, with loss. Again, there should be a linking sentence or a, a conclusionary sentence, a concluding sentence, sorry, uh, from the, your middle paragraph to your next paragraph. Okay. Now, how do we all we put this all together? Let's have a look at um, the first thing that we need to take into mind, and that is meaning. You will find, and I'm sure you've heard that before, your uh, descent is safe, you let iemand totaal anders, wat jou eindelijk nie, net vir die vak weet, enig so iets nie, jou opdracht te gaan lees. Bloot lees om te kyk na betekenis. Ok. Want, hulle so baie vinnig achterkom, selfs op wetle niks van die, van die thema nie, when your writing is not logically laid out, ok, or when uh, they struggle to make connections between the information. Okay, um, that being said, in each paragraph, the sentences must logically follow from the previous sentence. That maakt toch sin. Je begin met die thema sin, en dan bespreek je die thema van een punt tot die volgende punt. In essay, of course, each paragraph must logically lead on to the next paragraph. Remember, I spoke about the concluding sentences at the end of a paragraph, which need to link to the introduction or the main idea sentence at the beginning of the next paragraph. That's exactly what we're speaking about here. Uh, each paragraph's topic sentence is then supported by evidence. I think I've said that uh, numerous times uh, before. Okay, 
Now, how do you perfect your paragraph? I've, I've sourced a diagram to kind of give you a visual idea of how this is done. And this diagram looks like this. First, you have your main facts. That would be your main idea. Uh, um, a sentence that doesn't necessarily have to be facts, of course. Um, it depends on what the topic is and what you, who your audience is, etc., etc. Then you provide it with more detail and you add a quote. More detail and a quote. Any additional comments and an optional uh, a biography uh, with regards to this as well. Okay. This is for the eenvoudiging in fun. Jullie zal in die vier jaar, as jullie die literatuur moet jullie doen, waar jullie literatuur opstellen moet schrijven, gaan hier die, hier die um, uh, uh, onderste boot driehoek baie uh, goeie richting vir die gee. Want jy gaan een stelling maak, in detail uit die, uit, die, uit die boek of uit die vliek uit verskaf om dit te ondersteun en een aanhaling doen. Oké, okay, om waar die daarin in kom. Nog detail, aanhaling en so gaan hier aan. Oké, okay, so that is a visual a portrayal of what we're working with. Um, if we look at paragraphs in general, they have one sentence that states a topic in a paragraph. Um, it sets, it basically tells us what's going to happen in that paragraph. And you do not, not have to say this directly. Oké, okay, jy hoef nie te sê in die volgende paragraaf van dit en dit gebeur. Dit is, dit is nie wat jy nie nodig nie. Want daar, denk aan wie jou gehoor is. Who your audience is. They aren't necessarily um, people with a lack of background knowledge or anything like that. So, there, there should be some tuition uh, allowed, or intuition allowed, but you should still be clear. Jy mag bykie intuisie toelaat, maar jy moet nog steeds duidelike sinne skryf. Um, daar moet nie, dit nie een raai skoot wees, en jy moet duidelik wees met wat jy sê, maar jy kan aanneem jou gehoor, het een bepaalde uh, uh, achtergrond. Oké, okay. then, this next thing that we must keep in mind, the other sentences in the paragraph, we've spoken about this, contain evidence or supporting detail for the statement, and then finally, the paragraphs, as I've said, way at the start, have some sort of conclusion. Um, it could be simply uh, restating what you've said uh, and linking it to your next paragraph, or it can just be a link. Uh, uh, but uh, the thing is, it should end off the paragraph uh, in an acceptable manner. Okay, here are a couple examples that I'd like to show you. Again, um, uh, uh, staying with the children's literature, uh, I'm I'm doing this from the topic sentence, children must be taught a love for literature from a young age. Um, so there's a couple of things that need to be discussed here. Firstly, there's a couple of ways of adding additional information. The first way is reasons. Now, if you look at my topic sentence there, children must be taught a love for literature from a young age. The younger a person is, the more impressionable he she is. The habit of reading and the love thereof are, therefore, more easily fostered at an early age. So reasons, why? Why must children be taught love for literature from a young age? That's one way of completing that paragraph. As you can see here, it's a pretty decent paragraph uh, there as it is. There could still be a couple of uh, quotes you could add there. Um, uh, but uh, just in terms of structure, you've got your topic sentence. You've got two supporting sentences, uh, a paragraph that's well on its way. The next um, uh, a tactic that you can use is possible consequences. I'm going to read that paragraph for you. Children must be taught a love for literature from a young age. If children grow up without the example of an adult who appreciates literature, then it is much, it's much, much less likely that they will enjoy reading as adults themselves. Once they are grown up, they are also not very likely to instill a love for reading in their own children. I see there's a spelling mistake and instill it should be two L's. Okay, you could also have added this as part of your reasons. In the next paragraph, but still referring to that original topic sentence of children must be taught a love for, for literature from a young age. Okay, then you can also use examples. Let's have a look at that paragraph. Children must be taught a love for literature from a young age. One way of grabbing children's attention is by introducing them to books on which movies or television series have been based. For example, The Hobbit, Narnia, uh, and Nancy Drew. Um, Typically, because children are more visually inclined, modern children are even more visually inclined. So this does help as well. Never, um, and also a bit of that we're probably in the diary or when you're the owner of the thing, never snub your nose at a comic. Okay. Comics are often the way to get the shyer children, the less likely children that don't want to read, in a reading habit. Okay. The starting point might not necessarily be the best way of conveying information, but it gets children going. And a lot of parents are not aware of that um, when you meet them in class. Uh, then the next one there, quotations. 
on olives. Children must be taught a love for literature from a young age. As William Jones, cited in the Literacy Company 2012, or the Literacy Company 2012, argues, open inverted commas, so it is with children who learn to read fluently and well. They begin to take flight into a whole new world as effortlessly as young birds take into the sky. Typically, you could add that to any one of your examples. You could add that to possible consequences. And you could add that to reasons as well. Okay. The hoef nie net op sy eie te staan. En moet as a blief nie net a aanhaling gee na jou topic sentence nie. So it shouldn't read, children must be taught a love for literature from a young age. And then the quote follows. Uh, uh, formulate that sentence properly and include the quote in the sentence. Uh, like we've done there. Okay. Statistics. Statistiek. Iets wat uh, baie mense daar van hou om baie te voeg, en maar wat um, baie effectief is, maar mens moet dit recht gebruik ook. Children must be taught your, your topic sentence, allowed for literature from a young age. Disadvantaged students in the first grade have a vocabulary that is approximately half that of an advantaged student. 2,900 words versus 5,800 words respectively. Of course, then you have to show in-text um, uh, referencing. Grave cited in the Literacy Company 2012. But then you also have to explain that stat. One of the main reasons for this is that advantaged students are usually exposed to books from a much younger age than are disadvantaged students. Okay, so there you've typically used uh, uh, statistics. I don't necessarily uh, think that this would fit with any of the other sentences uh, because the topic uh, doesn't carry on right through. And here we're speaking of advantaged and disadvantaged uh, uh, children. Uh, you could possibly have... have um, uh, included that as part of your, what was this, your possible consequences uh, as part of that uh, main paragraph uh, included your your um, statistics. Okay, then there's anecdotes, anecdote uh, in Afrikaans, dit is maar goed is wat met mens gebeur, en dan, dit is half um, snaaks, en dan gebruik hulle dit is deel daarvan. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this uh, uh, as part of academic writing, but at some stage you can still use it. Okay, your topic sentence again, children must be taught a love for literature from a young age. Then, here comes my anecdote. I can attest to this from my own experience. My earliest memories are of reading naughty books with my mother before going to bed. Today, I still cannot go to sleep without reading a few pages out of whatever book lies on my nightstand. But I care, this is for my honest um, I can't, I can't, yeah, the book can't sleep, so I can't sleep, and I can't read it, and I can't book. Nou ja, dit is nie erg sin gemaakt nie, maar verskoon my man. Ok, so those are anecdotes, statistics, quotations, examples, uh, consequences and reasons. Each to support this topic sentence. Daar is lief, ek het gesê, in die nie thema's oor eenstem, in die nie argumentslein oor eenstem, kan jy hier twee saam gebruik ook. Jy hoef nie en wenig uh, apart te hou nie, so lang dit jou thema sin versterk. Then, last but not least, analogies, analogie, wat beteken if, een vergelijking, een metaforische vergelijking uh, vir een story met de volgende story. Jullie zal dit excuus toch in jullie vierde jaar uh, literatuur doen. Children must be taught to love for literature from a young age. Uh, there is my topic sentence again. Uh, then a child with a love for books enters a classroom like a warrior with a sword entering a battlefield. Again, as with anecdotes, uh, anecdote, I'd be careful to use that because firstly, in an academic piece you need to support things through other academic writing, okay? You can't make these metaphorical uh, statements like this and not, not uh, uh, prove this. You could perhaps have um, s brought in the uh, disadvantaged, excuse me, I no, the disadvantaged quotes, uh, the, the, the statistics quotes, you should put in half other gevat het, uh, om nou jou metafoor te verduidelik. But be very careful of them, because people can have several interpretations of the same uh, metaphor. Okay, let's move on. And look at coherent writing. We've discussed structure now. We've discussed paragraphs. Each paragraph containing a main sentence. Each main sentence supported by uh, other reasons, uh, possible consequences, uh, anecdote analogies. Um, what else did I have? Statistics. Um, uh, yes, you'll you'll find the rest that I've missed there. Okay. Now we move to coherent writing in general. In other words, moving from paragraphs, combining paragraphs uh, by itself. Okay, um, the whole thing behind coherence uh, is uh, or has a regard to thinking logically, laying out your train of thought logically. 
Now, the first thing you'd say is, sir, not everybody thinks in the same logic way, which is correct. Okay. But try and do it in a commonly accepted way. Okay. Starting at one point and finishing at the next. Okay. In, why do we do this? Because we want to keep our reader interested. Uh, and if you confuse him or her by writing illogic, illogically, then you will lose your reader. So, it's going to be a little bit of Okay. Um, gebruik bijvoorbeeld uh, nummering, uh, eerstens, tweedens, derdens, of um, discourse markers, zoals we dan zien hier gaan wees. You should have learned about discourse markers in Akkach. Here they are again. Uh, in a typical exam situation, I can ask you, I can give you a paragraph or a, a piece and say, okay, enter the correct discourse markers in these empty spaces and I can give you a list and then one would be correct uh, and the rest um, won't. Okay, so this is what the schools markers betreft. That it's typisch is what I said. Eerst en tweedens, maar het is verbindingswoorden, uh, woorden wat ook jou sin uh, in vlakke omskip. Okay, om te sê, behalwe dit, krijg dat. Um, een voorbeeld hiervan is dit. Uh, aan die andere kant, dit. Omdat dit. Um, as a result of, because of, die rede daarachter, consequently, uh, die gevolgtrekking hierachter, in addition, typische discours markers. Baie keer het jy een komma net na die uh, discoursmerker uh, self. Ok, to finish off, I would like to show you the Pew method. This is basically a method that brings everything um, together. We've learned today from our main topic sentences right through to our supporting uh, sentences in our paragraph, what we use, and then the use of uh, discourse markers uh, in between. Ok, the Pew method, Pew stands for point, the main topic sentence, uh, sentence Evidence, okay, it could be statistics, it could be possible consequences, it could be, um, what did I now um, uh, Quotes, for example. And then you need to give an explanation to that quote, which is the second E, okay. And then finally, you need to write a concluding sentence that links this kind of parag paragraph with the next paragraph um, uh, to come. Okay, your first sentence, as I said, must start to point, uh, that's pretty obvious. Introduces your topic you're about to discuss and tells the reader what the paragraph is going to be about. Then uh, your uh, your support, your evidence behind this, the, the first E um, is the examples, the statistics, um, and the quotes that you give okay, to support the point you made in your first sentence. And as I said, it can include facts, statistics, research findings, quotes uh, from credible authority or a primary text. So this is typically uh, uh, your, um, your, your, excuse me, what was your, your evidence. Okay. Then after your evidence, you need to uh, explain your evidence. Make it clearer for your reader. Vertel het weer in een eenvoudige zin. Basically, tell your reader how you understand the statement you've made here. Okay. Um, how it links with earlier things you've done, uh, that is very important. Onthou as it lief, as you skryf, probeer so veel as moendlik net simple sentences skryf, so nou en dan a, a complex sin, en so min as moendlik a compound sin. Dit gaan daar oor, dat eenvoudige gedagtes deurgewe gee word in simple sentences. Die leeser verstaan het, goed, as baie meer uh, respose, poses tussen in, Maar um, die leeser verstaan precies wat aangaan uh, en kan dit stap voor stap uh, volg. In plaas van een lang sin en sit en dan moet ek weer die sin begin van vooraf lees wat anders te uh, volg ek nie wat jy um, sê. Lastly then, your link as we've said, it should reinforce, it should conclude, it should restate your original point uh, or link your writing to the next paragraph. I think it should be both. That is very important. It could even be two sentences. Uh, just to make sure uh, that there's a proper linkage and um, conclusion. Um, and as I said, it is a transition uh, to the next topic uh, or paragraph. Goed jylle, uh, ons is klaar vir vandag. Ek uh, is dankbaar vir die tijd wat jylle saam met ons kan spandeer. Uh, werk hard aan die um, uh, um, semesteropdrachte. Jylle sal sien, daar is een uh, 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 in een stuk vir jou semesteropdracht hierdie. Rugleiding wat jy vandag geleer het, gaan gebruik jy om my opsomming in stik uh, te doen, maar dit is hoe ons jou daar oor gaan toets. Ek hoop jy dat jy lekker na wek, tot ziens.